Well, hi everybody. Welcome to the third video of how to play the girl from Ipanema. I'm Bruce with Clay Horse Music in Boise, Idaho. Today, basically, what we're going to do is cover the chord structure, talk a little bit about chord substitutions, and go over a set of chords that are good for the beginning or the introduction part of the song, even though they're not really originally written for the song. They work quite well. So let's start off there. Let's go over the chords that we're going to use at the introduction. The first chord we're going to do is a C6-9 chord. This is a very popular jazz bossa nova chord. It's used in bossa nova quite a bit for the beginnings and endings of songs. It's just got that nice mellow sound to it. The C6-9 chord is formed by rooting the chord on the third fret of the, of the fifth string, which is your C, with the second finger. Then we have 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret. The middle two notes that are on your 2nd fret are created with a bar with your 1st finger. Now, I will annotate these chords in the description section below. So that's your C6-9 chord. The second chord is going to be a D9, which we've already seen in the previous video. So on your 5th string, 5th fret, you anchor that chord with your 2nd finger. That's your root. So it goes 5, 5th fret, 4th fret, 5th fret, 5th fret. Play just 4 notes, the inner 4 notes. Don't play the 1st string or the 6th string. The next chord is a D minor ninth. So we're taking our D ninth and we are shifting it to a minor simply by sliding our major third, which is our first finger, down to the third fret, down one fret to the third fret. So we have fifth fret, third fret, fifth fret, fifth fret. It's a D minor ninth, another popular chord in bossa nova. Now we just slide, we keep our first finger where it is and we slide the rest of the fingers along to follow it down to the fourth fret. So we have fourth fret, third fret, fourth fret, fourth fret, which is a D flat ninth. It's a D ninth we started out with that this is a just slid the whole ninth chord down one fret. D flat ninth. Now we're back to our C6 9 again. We play that and then we play a D flat ninth again to turn it around. All right, let's go through those chords and see what they sound like. I'm gonna punch in a little rhythm here. Then you go into your, or you could go. So those chords are in the key of C, and what's interesting about this is our song is in the key of F. So how does that work? Because I don't think you probably noticed we had a key change there, did you? Well, we did. And the reason why it kind of slips your attention is because um, the C is a, a, a fifth of the um, F. Uh, key and so if we played it sounds like a turnaround or it sounds like something that you might hear at the end of a phrase or something but anyway it doesn't catch your ear as being anything unusual so therefore when we go from um, this little intro series of chords that are in C into the F major 7th for the main part of the songs and change it from the key of C to key of F, we kind of feel like we've shifted from a turnaround into the song. So it's like we're starting out with a turnaround and then we shift into the main part of the song. And you've heard that so many times and you're so used to it that you don't think there's anything unusual there. Let me play it one more time and listen to this little key change now that you're aware of it. Did you hear it? 
Okay, so now that we've worked out the intro of the song, let's talk about the ending. There are various different ways that we can end the song, but one of the ways that we can do it to sort of complete the circle is to use the same chords that we did during the intro, at least, at least one of them, at least the beginning chord. Use that as the last chord. Now we're going to end up in an F major 7th at the end of the song. And we can use the turnarounds that we use, the F sharp 7th and the F 13th, when we end the song. So you could... I like to go to the F 13th then. And then back up to the F sharp 7th. Now the question is, where do you want to go from there? You can end the song with an F major 7th, which to me is boring. I mean, that's just way too predictable. Uh, you, could end, you could end it... That's pretty nice. That's the way I ended, I think, one of my little demos I gave you. You can end on the F 13th. That's much more interesting. Or you could go the F sharp 7th back to an F 13th, back to an F sharp 7th, follow this bass line up to uh, either the C note, and on the C 6 9, or if you follow this straight up, you end up with a C 6 9 over a G. So it would sound like this. I think is very interesting. Okay, so now that we've got our beginning and ending worked out, let's move on to the song proper. Specifically what we're going to do is we're going to look at chord substitutions and simplification. And let's start the conversation with looking at how many unique chords there were in that original, that original backing track that I laid down for the first video. So if we count them, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chords right there that are unique. A little bit of repetition in terms of chords, maybe a little different fingering than the first time through, but depending on how you want to count them. And then a couple more unique chords. You know, we got the F 13th and um, the F sharp 7th and all that. So, depending on how you want to count them, you've got maybe a dozen or 15 unique chords in this chord progression. So what we want to do now is we want to simplify this chord progression down into major blocks and the way we do that is the way we did it in the second video is just to say we have a first chord, a second chord, a third chord, and a fourth chord and there are any number of variations of chords and substitutions that will work for each one of those groups of chords. So that's what we're going to look at right now. Okay, so for our first chord, or bucket of chords, if you will, um, we had chosen a F major 7th in the open position in the second video for playing the lead along with the chords. That's probably about the most boring version of an F major 7th that you can come up with, but it worked quite well for us when we had to play the lead with our little finger. So let's talk about all the other chords that we can use in the place of that one instead of it. First of all, I had come in with this F major 9th when I laid down the backing track. So that chord is based on the root note being on the 5th string and the 8th fret with your 2nd finger. So it goes 8, 7, 9, 8. 2nd finger, 1st finger, 4th finger, 3rd finger. That's an F major 9th. And while we're up there, and we, while we've got that root note on the F, we can also play an F major 7th up here. Always come down and hit the 5th if you want. So we have a 8, 10, 9, 10. We have a, an F major 7th 
on the first fret position with the first finger um, six string first fret and skip the A then we have second fret second fret first fret when I I use this chord to when if you lift your your third finger your ring finger which is the fourth string that gives you kind of an interesting sound and uh, I will show you another chord in a minute that goes along with that quite nicely so what else do we have we have a F13 that we had used as a turnaround it's kind of a neat chord first finger first fret on the sixth string skip a string then you have third second third F thirteenth. So those are all chords that are in that bucket for the quote unquote first chord. Okay, second chord. Second chord was a G thirteen. If you will recall, we played it like going to a G seventh on the third fret and then playing the E note with the little finger here on the second string, fifth fret. Now we're going to tighten up a little bit here and uh, talk about playing um, the four note jazz chords. So if we're going to stick by that rule, remember there are a lot of things we did in the second video because we were playing lead. So we kind of gave ourselves some, some wiggle room to move around in those chords a little bit more. But here, let's just play a standard four note chord so we don't need this fifth string note here. So we could we could play it like this it's basically the G note which your third fret six string skip a string then you have uh, a third fret against your bar and then fourth fret fifth fret now I played it like this which is a more typical jazz style of playing the chord it's exactly the same notes it's just not using the bar. You're just using your first and second finger on the third fret here of the sixth and fourth string and then you're using your other two fingers for the um, fourth and fifth fret. Now I told you that back here when we were playing that F major seventh that you could well you can also follow that up by the next chord um, using the bar. You, that's one reason why you might want to use the bar is so that you can lift that little finger and give that interesting tone. In terms of the G 13th, um, that's kind of your options. You can, you can sort of just choose how to finger it, but there aren't too many options in the way that you can play it here unless you want to play it up here somewhere, which is um, is really not that pleasant in terms of the way it sounds. It's better to play it down here on the third fret. Okay, on to the third chord, which is a G minor seventh. And if you recall in the second video, we played it as a typical G minor seventh barred on the third fret with our little finger uh, adding the, the second seventh into the chord, which would be on the fourth fret of the second string, because that was where our lead was. We needed that for our lead. But now we're playing um, strictly four note jazz chords. So we know that we don't need the fifth string because we're never going to play it. So no use fretting it if you're not going to play it. And we don't need this upper seventh because we don't need the melody line right now. We're strictly playing chords. So that brings us down to a simple bar on the third fret where we're playing the sixth, fourth, third, and second string. That is a G minor seventh. And if you recall, I suggested playing the minor seventh positions with the third finger flatted across the middle three notes and then use your second finger for the root. This allows you to quickly position yourself with these two fingers into a new chord. This one can be hovering over the note that needs to go into. This one could actually be positioned onto the note before you change chords, which we're going to do in a minute. So the 
third chord, which is the G minor seventh, is really just the choice of whether you want to bar it like this or bar it like this. And I would definitely recommend this way. Now, you know, you can play a G minor seventh up here and all that, but it's it really is not in the tonality of the song, the voicing of the song. You don't want to jump up here and pop a G minor seventh up here. You can experiment with it if you want, but I'm I'm just going to stick down here with these two different fingerings of the G minor seventh. So that brings us to the fourth chord. In our simplified version, we used a C seventh for that chord. Most of the sheet music shows a G flat seventh flatted fifth. Here's how you play that chord. You play your your root note with your G flat on the sixth string with your second finger, skip your A string as usual. Then you have your second fret, third fret, first fret. So your first finger is on the first fret of the second string, your fourth finger is on the third fret of the second string, your third finger is on the second fret of the third string, and then your second finger, as it frequently does, is holding down home base on your G flat. So, um, let's talk a little bit now about how we go from our G flat 7th flatted 5th into that turnaround at the end of section A. Now, since this is just kind of a bunch of passing chords or transition here or turnaround. I'm not going to worry too much about the names of all these chords. I'll just show you how to play them because it's, again it's more like the feel of them than it is the uh, the actual names of the chord that's important. So if we go from our G minor 7th into our G flat 7th flatted 5th, we slide the majority of this chord up to the fifth fret. Now the good news is that all of the fingers stay on the same strings, although the chord shape shifts. So what we do is we we take that G flat seventh flat and fifth, we slide our root note up to the fifth fret and we align, we just keep those fingers aligned in the fifth fret and we we keep our first finger in the third fret. So you just Now what we do is we take these, the fourth string and the sixth string, these two fingers here, we keep our first finger and our fourth finger, first finger and fourth finger where they are, and slide these two notes down. Then we make a, what would be a, C sharp major ninth. Remember, I showed you that major ninth is exactly the same chord here with a C sharp. So that's the fourth fret. So it goes fourth, third, fifth, fourth. And C sharp major ninth. And then major ninth is an important chord, so I'll just mention that. And then we go to a, this is an interesting transition. You basically have your root note, second finger, as usual, on the second fret of the sixth string. And then we skip the A string, and you have your third finger here, which second fret, third fret, first fret. So you have second fret, skip A, second fret, third fret, first fret. And now you're back to whatever F major 7th or F 13th or whatever you want, F whatever. I like to go into a F major 7th in that position because these two fingers here just slide down. Now you're into your F major 7th which is your 1 skip 2 2 1. And that's where I do that. And then go into. Now, when you go into the end of that again, this is where we did the turnaround the last time, but we don't want to do the turnaround. I just go 
to a F13 and I just hold it there and wait to go into the chorus. Okay, the chorus we covered in video two, so I'm not going to go over that again, but let me go over this turnaround again with you. This is very complex, but this is the tail wagging the dog. This is not an important part of this whole exercise, but if you do want to sort of <laughs> double black diamond and uh, challenge yourself, then no, let's go. So, so basically G minor 7th goes down into the G flat 7th flat 5. You take that G 7th flat and these fingers here are going to slide all up into the 5th fret and this is going to go to the 3rd fret like that. So we go from a and the nice thing about it is the fingers change their relationship to each other slightly, not much, but the nice thing about it is they, they slide right up on the same strings. Nice change. So this is five, skip, five, five, three, and then four, skip, four, five, three, and then a, a major ninth. It's a root on the fifth string now, so we have four consecutive strings that we're playing. So we have four, three, five, four. And that chord, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a root note on the second fret of the sixth string. Skip the A, then we have the second fret, third fret, first fret. And then into your F major seventh. Well, that's pretty much the raw material for the song. Let's play around a little bit with some variations of it, or at least discuss some of the decisions that are made in the course of playing the song, or the rhythm part of the song, sort of what chords you pull out of each one of those four buckets that you reach into. I usually don't think about it too much in advance. But okay, so here we go. up nicely to the G13 and then down to this for the um, turnaround. Now I use these two chords, this chord and this chord, to make that sound and then let's do a C7 just for fun and hold the F13 going into the key change. B section. Just an example. So I hope you enjoyed this. If I'm going to offer you a piece of advice here, you can take it or leave it. Be very patient with yourself. It does not help you to become impatient when you try to learn new chords, especially these kinds of jazz chords. Give yourself a lot of time to learn them. I never learn, never try to learn a new bossa nova song unless I give myself a week. Um, if I learn it in less time than that, that's fine. But what I do is I will go in and, uh, for instance, if there's a difficult chord transition, I'll give you a really good example, in one note samba. That's tough. <laughs> so 
Um, I just keep doing it until my subconscious mind starts to pick it up. And again, it becomes a kind of a feeling like you, you, it's not like knowing where your fingers are going. It's just they know where to go, right? So, so to make those difficult transitions like that quickly, you start out slow, be very patient with yourself, give yourself plenty of sleep time between your practice sessions because that's actually when your subconscious mind processes this new information and you actually learn how to play things when you're not playing them so you just consciously work on the chord positions be very gentle with yourself and you know sometimes you get your fingers in these weird positions that you're just not used to with these chords I mean it's a very odd feeling to me I'm not used to getting my fingers all crammed down here on the first couple of strings but sometimes that's what it takes so once you become familiar with the chord um, and you just keep doing it over and over and over again then your subconscious mind starts to get used to the feeling of that chord and it feels natural to you and then there's just nothing to it but you forget that that's the way that you learned how to play guitar to start off with it was just as difficult for you to learn how to play a C chord as it is for you to learn how to play a you know flat seventh flat five chord or you know whatever so um, just take your time and learn a little bit every day that's the key don't try to bite off too much I usually try to learn if if it's a new song and all the chords are new to me I might try to learn maybe four chords uh, you know and I'll learn the first four chords of that song and I'll just kind of fool around with them and play them a little bit and then the next day I will review those four chords and maybe I'll add couple more, two, three, four more, and then um, give myself, you know, a week to learn a new song. A lot of these songs have, I've counted um, 21, 25 unique jazz chords in them, non-repeated. So it's not like playing uh, Smoke on the Water, you know, I mean, it's, it's a very sophisticated process. So give yourself some time and be patient with yourself okay so anyway hang in there and uh thanks for your attention i appreciate it